Thank you for a, to be here for this talk. I know it's the last slot, so I really appreciate it. I thought the room would be like nearly empty, so it's great. Um, I'm Nicola Frankel. For a long time, I've been a Java developer working as consultant. Then I did some architecting stuff, and I mean, and at some point I decided that uh, customer were too bothersome, and it would be much better to go to conferences, drink beer, and talk to pe uh, to, to two people, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm now working as a developer advocate for Hazelcast, and I've been a long co time Kotlin fan. Who knows about Hazelcast, by the way? <laughs> yeah, that we assume that. So if you're interested, if you are in the Java ecosystem, basically, Hazelcast is like a distributed data structure, to make it very simple. And then we have another product called Jet, which builds upon it, and which does stream processing using Hazelcast MDG, so in memory, which it needs to be very, very fast. OK. Now, probably uh, you might have heard already about domain-specific languages. Like a couple of years ago, they were very, very hot. I even think there is a, like an O'Reilly book or a Manning book about them. And basically, a domain-specific language narrows the scope and the features of a general purpose language in order to guide you to make uh, development on this narrow scope much easier. And for example, we can think as XML as a general purpose language, even though, yeah, I know it's not really a language. And then you can create those narrower scopes languages such as SVG on top of XML. Or if you are using Java, um, you can have those DSLs, which are used for assertions. I don't know why, but assertions seems to be very popular for DSLs. So a couple of years ago, there was Hamcrest, first assert. Now I think the most popular is assertj. And in Kotlin, uh, at some point, there was this uh, way to create Android UIs and they add a DSL called Anko. So you didn't need to write your UI in XML. You just like really coded it. So you didn't need to inflate. It was pretty good. I think that they stopped the development. I don't know why, because I'm not an Android developer. Um, and then I created something called Cardin that I will show you in the end. And in Java, you are pretty limited uh, to create such DSL. And in general, what you are doing to create the DSL is just like you sequence your method in order. OK. Um, the most popular method is actually method chaining. So basically, while you, you are returning the current object at the end of each method. And then you can like chain the method together. You can also have nested method calls and lambda. But in the end, the best you can achieve is something like that. So this is OSRG code. And yes, it reads like correct English, um, and, and you cannot do much better. So that, that's, that's what at most you can do. Um, I have an example in another project um, here. Whoops. This one. So here is like a DSL, which uses the Florence API, and you need formatting. But then you, when you are formatting, it reads pretty well. It looks like the YAML. If you, are, if you know about Kubernetes, it, it looks pretty much like YAML. Um, but you, you, can do, you cannot do much better with, with Java. So I want to create a DSL, and I want it to look like declarative and still to be code. And let's use Kotlin to do that. So let's start. So I will start with this very simple sample, which is Vardin codes, and Vardin is a web framework. Who knows about Vardin, by the way? A couple of people. So I assume half the room is our Android developers, right? In general, like the Java server-side people know about Vardin because it's the way that you can create 
like web apps without coding a single line of HTML. So if you already are a front-end developer or an Android developer, you don't care that much. Um, now, even if you don't know Vardin, you understand, I think, pretty well what this does. So you set a theme, you create a vertical layout, you set the content of the UI to the vertical layout, then you add a margin, then you add components, and yeah, then you've got your stuff. This is pretty cool to write, however, um, I, I, I think there is this big issue that basically you can just change the, the order and nothing will happen. I mean, you will still have the same. The only thing that is really relevant are those two components. You can even set the margin at, at the end or set the content at the end. And so if you have like team of developers, um, they will write each in their own way. And unless you've got very, very strict uh, guidelines that, for example, you should always set the content at the end or set the margin at the end or whatever, um, then it might be hard for, um, to, to get into some new code. So how can Kotlin can help us? So first, what we will do is we'll create a new UI, Kotlin UI. And we will create this Kotlin UI. So I want to create the same, but using a DSL. But first, I will be very, very step by step. So the first thing that we can do is here, we have this set theme. And let's use some property access syntax. So that's one very nice way to do that. So if you have a setter, then you can just use this property access syntax. It gets the things a bit better. Now, if we would be in Java here, in order to start, we would do something like that. So we would create like these like static methods, and we are, we are in Java, so it's supposed to be object oriented. But basically, uh, we also have uh, always have these UIs classes that are not object oriented at all, and then they create the layouts. So if I copy paste or cut paste this into your Kotlin. Thanks to IntelliJ, I already have this working for me so I can copy Java code, copy uh, and, and paste it into some uh, Kotlin and then I've got already Kotlin. I can remove this object because with Kotlin I can have like top level function and it gets much, much better already. So basically now I can say, hey, vertical layout this, and I get my vertical layout. And then I can affect this to a vertical layout, and I can like add some layout dot, uh, add component, so uh, label, blah, blah, blah. Label. Two. Okay. But still, I will have the, 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 the same problem as before. But uh, again, as I mentioned, we will do it like it's text field. We will do it uh, bit by bit, text field. I will call it hello world. So I have the same problem as before. I have this order problem. OK. Now. What would be great is actually I have this vertical layout. I can use those extension function in Kotlin. So instead of having like this function that uses this parameter, I can say instead that vertical layout is called on UI. And then, of course, I can remove that. And here, I can have that. So it's a bit better already. Now, on vertical layouts, basically on every layout, I can have like margin and paddings. So if I was in Java, I would create like an additional method. And here, margin boolean. And here, margin, and here I would create the padding one, 
pairings, boolean, and here say vertical layouts, uh, sets, uh, it's called spacing, sorry, spacing is spacing and uh, I can use this. Okay, and now comes the problem. I can have, now I want to, to, to set the default value. So here I would say vertical, uh, it returns something, so return vertical layout, and I will say margin, let's say the default will be true. And here I would say that it returned a vertical layout, and the default will be true, true. Something like that. Now, issue with that is I need to choose what the default uh, for spacing or margin. I, can have, I cannot have both because actually those are Boolean parameters. So they, send the same, uh, they say share the same uh, signature, they are conflict, and it doesn't work anymore. So as the previous speaker, uh, I'm told we can wrap them inside an inline class, then it creates a new type, uh, but it's a lot for not much. So what can we do? Well, the first thing is we can provide defaults. And now we can remove everything, and we have a single signature. Here, vertical layout, we can say this. It will work. Need to be a bit smaller. Everybody still sees, even at the back. Fine. Um, I will create layout two, and here I can pass nothing, so everything will be true. Now I still have an issue, because if my spacing um, is true and my margin is false. Sorry, it's the opposite that I wanted to do. I still need to pass it as true even though it's the default, which I don't like because it's too much. So no worries, because with named parameters, I can have exactly that. So right now, the only thing that we still have as an issue is this like components uh, ordering stuff. Actually, it's a real issue. Um, we didn't solve the, the initial problem, so we created everything that worked, but we still have this, this problem. Now comes something very, very great. We can add a lambda here. We can add a lambda that will be called a receiver lambda. It takes nothing, it returns nothing, it's called, let's say, init. And with this lambda, we can apply it, sorry, we can apply it. So basically apply means that we will execute this lambda on this object. And now, we can get a bit better by doing this. Still not perfect, but it's a bit better. And, and we can also here, we can actually like scope, what we don't want to see, saying a hey, apply, and we can apply here the stuff that we did before. And now it's this. I will put this everywhere, and I can chain it, and I don't even need this variable, so as, as, as a user, you don't care that much, but as the code maintainer, you, it's interesting. And 
given that actually it's pretty easy to understand, then we can use like a simple body, like an expression body, and it doesn't tell me how I can do it, so I will do it automatically and remove the return type. Because now even if you understand here, you return a vertical layout, the compiler understands it, and you don't need it anymore. There are two applies, and now as a like library designer, you need to, to think what's more important. Um, what do you want to override? For example, do you want first to apply the custom stuff? And then whatever happens, you will set the margin to the one that, that was given or, and the spacing to the one that, that was given? Or do you want to let the user like full power, and then he can override saying, hey, you can set the content to something else. So as a, a, as a library designer, that's something you need to, to do. Now here, I don't need this variable anymore, and I can create my vertical layout like this. And the problem with that is you always need to pass a lambda. You cannot just say vertical layout like this. But that's fine, just as we default parameters that are Boolean, we can pass a default parameter that is like the empty lambda, and then it works again. I don't know if you, uh, what's your level in Kotlin, but this is made possible by the fact that normally this would be what should be expected. But if a lambda is the last parameter in your uh, method parameters, then you can extract it outside. It's just syntactic sugar, but actually it gets pretty good. The fact that you can uh, remove it, and, and I, I, I don't know if, so the question is whether uh, uh, this syntactic sugar as a name, and the answer is I don't know, so perhaps somebody in the audience knows the name. I call it like lambda syntactic sugar. <laughs> I know that this as a name, it's called lambda with parameter. That's, that I know, but this one, uh, that's a good question. I will check. Sorry again? Yeah, it's just syntactic sugar. It's just like, hey, if the lambda is the last parameter, you just extract it and everything is fine. Okay. And I mean, now you know everything because the next step is to actually do the same with like the label. So I can create a label. And it's exactly the same stuff that I used, so here, I'm using the label, uh, and I have like a lambda with parameter that has by default nothing. Then it creates a new label with this, and now I can replace this like add component label with label. Hello. And guess what? I can do the same thing with text field. Oops, not here. No, text field, field, nope. So I will copy paste it because I don't remember the shortcut. And so I will say text fields. Now should be caption. And here it's this at text fields. And it's a text field. Yeah, once you understood the trick, it's, it's a lot of copy paste, I agree. Um, and guess what? Now you can replace it with text fields, with world. And now you can do some stuff here. And here you can do some stuff also here. And the good thing is now they become nested. And now you understand what happens. And actually, if you are not interested in something, 
given your ID, you can hide it. So basically, it's the master detail stuff. You can enter at any point and, and see everything and then go into the detail. Um, but it, it doesn't stop there. Like, imagine that um, you have a lot of people who create HTML uh, labels. So here, as I, as I did before, um, my sample UI here was saying, hey, hello, in strong. And I need to set it as, like, um, it was content type. So I need to set this dot content mode, sorry, HTML. No, you don't want it? What does it tell me? Okay, so perhaps it was not the right one, content mode HTML, now it's the right one, now I can remove this. No, it doesn't want to import, please do it. No, okay, don't do it. Um, so imagine that every time I, I need to create that, that wouldn't be that great. So what I can do is I can create a dedicated one that will use uh, the label function that I created above and that does it automatically. So if you have a lot of people that use this, then just like make them their, their life easier and just create an HTML function. And once you, you understand that, life is easy. Um, because you, you can do it uh, for the whole framework. And if I run that, and here, you can see that I've created a sampler with every possible option of every possible widget, and that's pretty stupid. Everybody can do it. It's just a lot of time. But basically, it's just like copy-paste every time. Everything is here. And for example, for hazel costs, um, I, I didn't know what to do in the plane, so, um, Actually, our, our configuration is in YAML or, or XML or JSON. Well, let's create a TSL because it's easier, it's less error prone. So here, I, I didn't do everything, but you can see that if you know Hazel cost, it looks really nice and it's compile time. So basically, you can check everything and it works pretty well. And if you are using Spring, you might know that they are also using this stuff when they create their um, Spring BNDSL. And actually, um, this is what it looks like. And again, even if you don't know Spring, you can understand what this does. And here, for example, that's what I like a lot, that you create a bean of type person repository without passing the class. Again, thanks to uh, the like inline stuff, which makes it possible to reify the classes, though it's not reification, it's just like, since it's like copy pasting, but still it knows about the type and then it knows that it must create a bin of type person repository. Now the question is, A, hey, we had Groovy before, we could create nice DSLs, why don't you use Groovy? Well, if you are a Groovy user, I guess that it's perfectly fine to use Groovy. However, I like my types. I like them. I know a lot of Groovy people, they prefer to say, oh, but you can do everything, and when you need types, you just put them. Well, I would reverse that stuff and say, hey, you know what? I prefer to type everything, and if I really uh, I cannot do that, then I can also cast to any if I cannot. Then perhaps there are Scala developers here, because Scala is very powerful, you can do everything. Yes, you can do a DSL with basic. You can write basic using Scala. Well, that's the problem, is uh, like Scala is very, very powerful, and then in like, if you gather like 15 Scala developers in a room, then uh, you will get 20 solutions for the same problem. So, not my stuff either. Takeaways. 
Um, so, the first thing how to create a DSL is basically you must start from Java, and Java, whatever the API, you don't care because your Kotlin code is 100% interoperable with Java in both ways. So you can call Kotlin from Java and Java from Kotlin. Of course, if you create a DSL in Kotlin in Java, it won't look so great, but you can build upon your existing Java API, even if it's your, not your API. Then you can use the property syntax. So basically, if you have like setters, just use the equal sign. It's always, it looks a bit cleaner. Um, the third is extension function. A lot of people say, hey, what's the best stuff in Kotlin? Oh, it's nullability handling. In my opinion, uh, it's extension functions. You can achieve a lot with extension functions. Um, my code becomes much more object-oriented when I use extension functions. And when I'm having, uh, when I have to, to code back in Java, it's really, really hard for me because I miss that feature. Uh, name parameters and default values, they go hand in hand. I, you should really, really uh, like consider them. So instead of overriding every time, uh, sorry, of overloading, uh, you should consider using them. It makes your, your task much easier, so instead of like chaining your, your, your methods, just use them. Lambdas with receiver, they are an unexpected thing. Uh, like for DSL, they are, they are a must have. Like everything is based on them. Some stuff that I didn't talk about, uh, operator overloading, so in Kotlin, um, you can overload operators, but it's not like you can overload everything like in C or Scala, so you cannot have like hash hash bang bang function. Uh, you must have, you can only have a dedicated set. So in some cases, depending on your DSL, you might want to add persons together, for example. Then it's good to uh, remember that you can overload the plus operator. Uh, Rayfi generics, I mentioned it when I showed you the Spring Beans DSL. Uh, it's really great. I mean, the fact that you can like make believe that you have Rayfi generics, even though the bytecode has no Rayfi generics, is really great. And something that I also didn't use in my uh, demo is the infix. So if your function only has one parameter, you can annotate it with infix, and you can call him without parentheses. So depending also on your domain, uh, depending if you are using a math DSL or whatever, then you can create uh, a nice DSL and remove the parentheses, and it looks better. And so thanks a lot for your attention. You can read my blog, follow me on Twitter, and more importantly, you can have uh, the look at what I just showed you, you so you can like git clone it and, and play with it. And also I have this card inside, so if you really want to, to see how it looks like when everything is finished, uh, even if it's an old version of Vardin, then I encourage you to have a look, and you will see it's only what I showed you here. So basically, if you want to create a full-fledged DSL with the 10 uh, bullet points that I showed you previously, you can already do it uh, by yourself. I really must warn you that it's very easy to write them. Again, it's a lot of copy-pasting, and it's, it looks super nice, uh, beware, uh, because once you start creating a DSL, then it's code, so you must maintain it. So if, you're, um, if, you, if you create uh, a nice DSL for, I don't know, on top of Hazelcast, that means that you need to maintain it or to give it back to us so we maintain it. But anybody, I mean, at some point, somebody is going to have to maintain it. So it looks nice, but it's like every time you write a line of code, you must think about, yeah, what's next, and next is maintenance. So I guess we have some minutes left, 10 minutes. Is there, are there any questions? Yes. What about uh, performance in the IDE, uh, especially uh, IntelliJ? Because I think when I was using uh, libraries with some extension methods, it, uh, I had 
to wait a lot for auto completion to appear, like maybe one second or something? I, 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 Is it okay? I didn't have such experience, and to be honest, I didn't benchmark it, so I, I don't know. But as as you could see, like on my demo, it's it's quite easy. Um, of course, when when you create extension methods and lambdas and whatever, in all cases, you will have those long function classes, names, and of course, that's not super great. I think that in the latest versions of Kotlin, you have incremental compilation, so I would suggest you to use that to speed up, if you, especially if you have big project, but uh, everybody uses microservices anyway, so that's fine. Other questions? Do you use uh, Kotlin in Hazelcast, in production code? Nope. Because I don't want to maintain that stuff. Because I know that uh, if I write it, I will have to maintain it. And here I have the main uh, like director of engineering, and he will chase my ass. You see? I don't want to put my finger in that, so I can I can give it to engineering and then they maintain it. But it, it, again, it, it's really every line of code that you don't write, you don't need to maintain. So you really need to think um, about the trade-offs. And in our industry, that's funny because we are supposed to be like logical people, but it's either white or black. And most of my talks is it depends. It depends on your context. So if you think that um, you make, you, you will ease uh, the way that your user are using your product, then of course you should provide a DSL. Now I know that not many of our users are using Kotlin. So I will address only a small fraction of our community and I will need to maintain it. The trade-off is not in, 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 in my favor here. Now if now everybody here decides that tomorrow they will convince 10 other people to use Hazelcast uh, with Kotlin. Then let's start talking. Uh, I, I must say that I've seen a lot of uh, Kotlin DSL libraries being uh, like stopped, uh, like maintaining has stopped because they didn't want to maintain it. But that, that's not my question. Uh, in high performance environments, do you think uh, this should still be done? Especially, uh, is, do you think there is a, like an overhead in calling init functions? Could they be inlined? Yes, you can. I mean, also inline is not magical. Yes, you don't, you, you don't need to call afterwards, but then you, you've got a lot of copy paste of these like codes. So if it's a lot of codes, then no, it's not a good idea. I, I think that when you, when you have such, such questions, you should basically do the benchmark in your own context with option A and option B and checks which metrics matter to you. Other questions? Okay, let's call it a day. Thank you very much. I have... Uh, I have some cool Hazelcast stickers and there are some cool uh, yeah. Kotlin stickers. We still left. have a lot of Kotlin stickers.